Okay, so, so far we've got our basic extrusion, we've got our uh, main UCSs developed and saved. Now we're going to start creating the features on each of the faces. So first let's take a look at the left side here. We'll review a little bit of the navigation and take a look at working with 2D profiles and regions to uh, produce the solid extrusions and then use the solid editing tools to remove the extrusions to create the remaining feature. So here we've got basically a chamfer and we've got a hole through just the, f the, the left face. If we study the feature here, oh, in addition we've got a, a fillet here of 0.25. So we can actually use our fillet and chamfer commands, our 2D uh, fillet and chamfer commands on 3D objects. Okay. One thing that you need to look at here is what sort of chamfer is this? based on the dimensions provided here and the notation shown we've got a 45 degree chamfer which basically means the two distances we are using to define that chamfer are equal based on the total depth we know that this length is one and this length is going to be one and then let's take a look at the fillet here we'll come back and we'll study the hole in just a moment so again we have the two viewports uh, if we're trying to navigate around the model, I told you you should always reestablish the UCS here, and we could flip it around just by using the view cube. All right. Now I like developing in the isometric view because this way, again, I can tell the difference between the front or the back faces of the model that I'm working with. So the next thing here is to establish the cor correct working plane. Since this is the left face that I'm going to be working on. I want to switch over to the left face UCS. Now anything I draw is going to be aligned with that plane. So understanding that what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a hole but we're also trying to show the the fillet and the chamfer. Take a look at your modify commands here. You can see we have the chamfer. If I activate that command you'll notice the options down here okay now we, we can do angle we could do distance all right now what we could start with first is selecting the edge that we're where we're going to chamfer so I'm going to select this top left hand side right here and you can see it's act asking you for the surface that you're going to chamfer you can see how it's the left face there that's highlighted right so we're going to click OK here that's the first face and then we have the uh, the second face the next thing it's asking for is the chamfer distance, right? We already calculated that to be 1. Okay. Now also, once I enter that, it's asking for the second distance, right? It's also 1 because we have a 45 degree angle. So I'm going to hit enter to accept that. Now that we define the distances, the two distances, right? We want to select the edge where we want to produce the chamfer. So it's going to be the same edge that we selected first and hit enter. There's our chamfer. Now our fillet tool is going to work just the same. So I'll come over here to fillet. First thing you want to do is enter the radius. We're going to do a 0.25 radius here. Hit enter and then we're going to reselect the edge again where we want to apply the radius. And then hit enter again. So just with those simple 2D tools, we've modified the 3D solid. And again, if I change our view to something like the shaded, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Okay? Let's put this back into wireframe here. And now we can continue with the hole. So for that, let's take a look at our sketch here. And you can see also that the dimensions provided are relative to the front face, okay? The front and the bottom face. We got 1.113 uh, setback from the front face and one inch from the bottom face there. And we have a radius of 0.47. So how would we show that, right? Here's what I would suggest. We're already in the correct UCS, okay? Now, what I would like to try to do here is set up some construction lines, okay? Uh, I could stay in the same layer if I like and then delete them later or if I wanted to, 
to keep these construction lines, I could put them on a separate layer and then hide them. I'm only going to use them temporarily, so I'm not going to change my layer. So I'll start first confirming that I'm in the right or the correct UCS, right? I'm in the left face UCS, as you can see here. I'll start with construction line, enter, and make a vertical construction line. And I'll put it along this face here. Okay, this is the front face of the left side of the part, right? Okay, that's like the back side there. If I were to offset that to the right by a total distance of 250, it should align with the front edge, right? Even though I have that chamfer there, okay? Even though, I'm sorry, I have that fillet there. Now, if I offset it again, 1.13 from the front towards the back, right? That'll represent one axis of the center point for my circle, all right, that I'll use as a whole. Again, if I use construction line, and this time I make a horizontal one, I'm going to align it with the bottom edge here. I'll use this one to offset another construction line of distance one, and this will locate the exact center for my circle that I'll use to produce the hole. And the way I'll do this is now I'll use a 2D circle starting at that intersection, right? Make sure you know which one you're you're selecting the intersection between the vertical and the horizontal construction lines that were offset. I'm going to start there. And notice, right, even though I'm in an isometric view, okay, I'm drawing a 2D circle and I can enter a pre precise dimension here for the radius, which is going to be 0.47. Okay. Actually, if I switch over to the left side, you can see now if I show you the west view or the left view here, you can see how the geometry is aligned, right? This view is the same view of this, but head on. Now, the thing is that this is just a 2D profile. It's not a solid yet. And what I want to do next here is I want to use extrude and I want to select the circle and then hit enter and then you'll notice that I again I can move it dynamically right I can move it dynamically to create the thickness notice how I come over here to the corner right to the corner of that chamfer and I can use that corner to establish the direction and the thickness of this circle that is now going to be a cylinder right or I could just punch it in numerically So I'm just gonna use this point over here so I'm gonna left click here and you can see there's the thickness of the cylinder now right if I go to view and I change from 2d wireframe to shade it you don't see a hole there yet right but you know that there's two solids there and actually if I show it to you as a 3d hidden you can see there's two solids there you can see it's detecting. There's a solid there, and that's still a solid, right? But I want to create a hole. So what I need to do is I need to now look at solid editing. What I want to do is use one of these operations, namely subtract. So what you do here is you select the object that you want to subtract from then you select the object that you want to subtract with. So if I start the command, right, you can see what objects do you want to subtract from? We want to subtract from the larger object, then hit enter. Now it's asking you what are the objects that you want to subtract with, and I'm going to select the cylinder. And sometimes this may be a little bit difficult to do, so you might have to zoom in and out, and if by accident, you select the larger object again, right? You can shift select to deselect. You could even uh, do multiple selections, right? 
there's two objects selected there and then you could use shift select to remove the selection of the larger object this is where it gets kind of tricky okay where you have to zoom in and be able to select the correct edges but if I hit enter now I should be able to remove the cylinder mass from the larger mass right and I can see that better when I shift from hidden view to shade it that right there completes the left face